How many of you uh, are familiar with this story? The story of Jesus talking to the woman at the well. Raise your hand if you're familiar. Yeah, it's okay. I, and thinking about it, I thought about some characteristics of the well and some of the truths of this story. And, and I'm just going to go through them fairly quickly for you here. Here's one of the things about a well. It means you can relax. You don't have to fill up the well. Now, I just had an email from a friend who owns an organic farm. And apparently one of the cows from her farm got into the wrong field and rubbed uh, to scratch on one of the watering troughs there and broke their hydraulic system. And she said, so for the next several days until we can get that fixed, we will have to fill uh, 100 ga two 100-gallon troughs with buckets of water from the kitchen. How's that sound? <laughs> That's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about a well that is dug deep and just maintains itself. The water is there. You don't have to put the water in. You don't have to make the water. And this is a place where Jesus comes to stop and relax there by the water in this arid land. Perhaps there was a shady spot over it. Might have been a nice place to be. And Jesus stops there to relax there. And he is calm and relaxed. And when a woman comes by from the Samaritan village nearby, uh, he is quite willing to just walk over all of the restrictions about his relationship with her. Doesn't bother him at all. He is relaxed about that. He is willing to talk to a Samaritan person, first of all, and he's willing to talk about matters of faith outside of Jerusalem, and he's willing to talk to a woman which at that time was just simply not done. You just didn't do it. The idea even that a woman should be uh, given information about important things was even foreign to them. But Jesus is just, these are not important matters to him. He is relaxed. That well is just filling up by itself and he is pouring it out again. Um, this is one of the things that, that this story tells me. Uh, he was living, Jesus was, by a higher law than other people were living by. He understood something that others didn't get. We struggle sometimes with these kinds of things, but the law of love is where we are to be. Respect for all kinds of people, and we can actually relax knowing that we can determine what is right or wrong by simply whether or not we are loving with it or not. Second of all, the well is not to blame. If the well goes dry, is it the well's fault? No. If the water in the well doesn't taste right, is it the well's fault? No, it doesn't make any sense to blame the well. If you want to go out and you get a bucket of water and there isn't any water there, it doesn't make any sense to blame the well. Something has happened. Something has gone wrong somewhere. Now, I want you to think about that well and think about this woman because every time I've heard this story commented on or preached on, the same point always comes up. She is a sinful woman. That's why she has to come to the well in the middle of the day, so she doesn't run into the wives of the other people of the village whose husbands she has clearly stolen from them. Um, and she, she, she just couldn't be any worse of a sinner, and yet Jesus is willing to talk to her, and that's a nice message. But at any point in this story, did anyone indicate that the woman was to blame or that she was bad or evil or sinful or had done something wrong? Why do you suppose she had five husbands? Some of you have had more than one. Some of you, yeah. So, why did she have more than five? There, how many reasons can there be for someone being married another time? I mean, it can happen. Uh, someone can die, someone can leave you, women can't live on their own in that society. Jesus never says to her that what you have done is sinful. He never says that. He doesn't blame her. Now, it might be that she was doing something in her life that was causing this to happen. It might be that she was, something was going wrong. But Jesus doesn't say to her, you wicked woman, shame on you for having all of these men. doesn't say that to her. Instead, he says, would you like some of the living water? He offers her his greatest gift rather than condemn her. 
It might be that you know somebody whose personal well has gone dry, and it is crazy to blame them for it. It is ridiculous to blame poor people for being poor, to blame addicted people for being addicted. It doesn't make any sense to do these things. When we kick up the well because the well is dry, we are not resolving the problem, which is somewhere else things have gone wrong. Is it a miracle? Let me ask you this. Did you get up this morning and make a cup of coffee? Who did? All right. So you went to the sink, right? And you turned on the water, and water came out, and you went, Praise God! There's water flowing right here in my sink. Did you? Did you? Did you even think it for a second? No, you didn't. You've just gotten used to it. Perhaps, though, you would have if you had remembered that most people in the world cannot do that. Most people in the world don't have that option. Clean, safe drinking water that you can just have like that. So maybe tomorrow or this afternoon when you go and do that, how about saying that? Thank you, God, for this great gift. Say it loud enough so somebody else in the house says, What? This well in the middle of Samaria is uh, a miracle in and of itself. Did you see the picture of Jacob's well? What did it look like around it? Did it look like there was any water anywhere? And yet there it is. Can you imagine how miraculous it feels to come on a place where there is water when you're walking through the desert? Wouldn't that just be miraculous? And the idea that somehow there is water deep underground flowing, fresh, clear, clean water, and there it is. It is a miracle. Water is a miracle for us. And when this woman came and met, sitting by the well, met God's chosen one, met the Messiah, met Jesus Christ who offered her a new cup of water, a new way of water, it was a miracle. Let's not argue. The woman tries to raise a religious argument. When Jesus points out to her that she's had five husbands and the man she's living with now isn't her husband, she gets nervous about that. And so she tries to change the subject. Do you remember what she said? What did she say? Karen, do you remember? Think about coming off the mountain and going... Yeah, she decides, she says, when he says that to her, she doesn't respond to that in any way. She says, you know, you Jewish people say we've got to worship at the temple, but we think we should worship up here on the mountain. And how long can a religious argument go on? <laughs> we don't know. Uh, we haven't had any end. So we don't know how long they can go on. She wants to start this argument to distract Jesus from talking to her about her life because she doesn't want to have to deal with the fact that maybe there's some changes she needs to make or anything like that. So she decides she's going to get Jesus wrapped up in an argument and he doesn't bite. He doesn't argue about whether people should be in Jerusalem or up there on the mountain. He just says there's a day coming when everyone is going to worship God in spirit and in truth. And that day is today. And that is a big change. So you don't have to be the one that puts the water into the well. But you may be the one that has to drop your bucket into it. Bucket's not going to just drop itself down and come back up with water in it for you. You have to draw the water. You have to come to the well with your bucket and draw the water out. That's the way it works. And this woman met Jesus, and he talked to her like she was an equal, and she recognized that he was of God, and she could have just walked away at that point and done nothing about it. But she decided to dip in that water that he offered. And she was so excited about what Jesus had to say that she ran back to the village and told all of her neighbors, who at first probably didn't quite get what she was saying to them, but then came out and met Jesus. She dipped her bucket into that well, and the entire community drank something of it. Do you believe? Are you a believer? Good. Then carry that water to somebody else. Do something about your faith. I have never worked anywhere where people actually gathered around a water cooler. Have you? You see pictures of it all the time, but I've never had a place like that. I have worked where people gathered around the coffee pot, but not around the water cooler. So if you've never been to a water cooler working place, let's just go ahead with the coffee pot. It's a place where we gather and talk. And there are communities around the world where the outdoor well is still that kind of a place. 
where they go and they can sit down and they can talk with each other and they can stop guessing about what each other is thinking. Because that happens at the water cooler too. Because people all the time like to talk about someone who is not there at the water cooler with them. And guess about what it is that's motivating them to do what they did. And why they did things a certain way. And why they said what they said. And we talk a lot about each other. But it would be wonderful if there was a place where we came together and talked to each other and found out about us. Can't you imagine as Jesus is walking along, headed towards this place with his disciples, and some of them are wag dragging behind because they're gossiping about one of the other ones of the disciples? Look at that guy, walking right up there with Jesus. He always has to be right next to Jesus. Why does he do that? Why doesn't he give somebody else? Or maybe they're walking along saying, I can't believe we're going into the village where the Samaritans are. I hate those people. Have you ever smelled a Samaritan? You can imagine that kind of say, conversation taking place. But Jesus says... Let's sit down. Let's talk. Tell me about yourself and listen to what I have to say. And all of this, all of this is the living water that Jesus talks about. It's the way Christ leads us and lifts us up. All of these things that we talk about, all of these miraculous things about the water, that's what Jesus is offering when he says, come, have a drink. Drink this living water and you'll never be thirsty again. And we'll do that this very day. Amen. You've been listening to a sermon by Rev. Stephen Carnahan, pastor of High Street Congregational Church in Auburn, Maine. If you feel inspired by what you hear, you're invited to join us in person for worship services every Sunday morning starting at 10 o'clock. Of course, you can always listen to Steve's sermons on the web. New sermons are posted every Monday by midday. Please explore this website for more information about our church or visit our Facebook page at High Street Congregational Church, comma, UCC, where you'll find the video version of Steve's sermons as well. We hope that God's presence will be known to you every hour of every day. May God's blessings rest upon you now and always. See you next week.